up. It's now 7.03 <clears throat> on March 1st, 2021. We have uh, on the commission this evening, we have Dave Stewart's here, Greg Banner's here, um, Andy Sumberg is here, Charles Lawrence is here, Jason Claremont's here. Obviously, I'm here, at least in body and mind, I think. Um, Paul's not yet shown Phyllis. Uh, Ibbotson had contacted me and said she wasn't going to be able. And was obviously, Roger's still on leave. Um, so we do have a quorum. Uh, first item on the agenda would be the minutes of February 1st, 2021. I guess I have to sit and continue here. There we go. Anyone have any comments about the minutes of February 1, 2021, aside from the fact that they're as usual, excellent. I would and I uh, make a motion to uh, accept. Any seconds? I'll do that. Charles Lawrence. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All right. Roll call. So it's Dave Stewart, aye. You made the motion. Greg Banner. Aye. Uh, Andy Sundberg. Aye. Charles Lawrence. Aye. Claremont. Aye. And the chair votes aye as well. So that's all again. Play it by the rules. Um, I'd like to make a motion to move ourselves down to new business if we could. Uh, new business two, G2, uh, so we can uh, let Ben off the hook as soon as we reasonably can. We've got the Bowen brothers here um, for reconsideration. So could we have a motion to remove to that, please? Banner motion. Second. Okay, motion uh, made by Banner and second by Andy Sumberg, Dave Stewart. Dave. Hi. Uh, Greg Banner obviously made motion. Hey. Um, Charles Lawrence. Aye. Jason Claremont. Aye. Chair votes aye. So universal, unanimous. All right, uh, we're going to move now to G2, the Bowen Brothers application for reconsideration. This is the, um, I'll let them do the explanation. Uh, gentlemen, you're on deck. Thank you, Bruce. Uh, I have a statement here that I'll, I'm happy to read and I'm also happy to submit for the record should that be necessary. So I'm Patrick Bowen. And I'm John Bowen. We're from Little Compton, as we had mentioned uh, before, uh, but we're no strangers to Tiverton also. We're happy to appear before this commission tonight to discuss our proposal for a modest one acre oyster farm in the Sakonet River adjacent to Sapawit Creek. As you are aware, our initial proposal was submitted in December of 2019. And in accordance with state procedural guidelines, we appeared at a public hearing before this commission on February 17th of 2020, for the purposes of a preliminary determination. At that meeting, we spent one and a half hours discussing our proposal and answering the questions of commissioners, state CRMC aquaculture coordinator, Dave Butel, and DEM representative, Anna Gerber Williams. Also in attendance that evening, was Mr. Philip Capaldi of Charlestown, Rhode Island. Mr. Capaldi, apparently familiar with some of the aquaculture farms in the Western part of our state, voiced concerns relative to nearby shellfish areas. At the close of discussion, this commission voted four to two in favor of allowing the proposal to move forward. The two dissenting votes cast by Mr. Kaur and Mr. Duart were based on the quality of water in the area and the location within recreational shellfish areas. A follow-up report written by State CRMC Aquaculture Coordinator Butel noted that the commission, the DEM, and the objector all stated that they would not have an issue with this farm if it was moved to deeper water adjacent to the proposed site. Based on this valuable feedback and in accordance with the intent of the local preliminary determination hearing, we modified our original proposal. We shifted the proposed site 
into deeper water and outside of the DEM recreational shellfish map area. We agreed not to transport aquaculture cages across the state DEM parking area. And we agreed to use a boat to place cages and to work the site if necessary. With regard to water quality concerns expressed at the meeting, we obtained the data from DEM in the annual, triennial, and 12-year water quality reports. In accordance with the National Shellfish Sanitation Program, the DEM monitors water quality using fecal coliform as an indicator of contamination. In reviewing these reports, it was determined that DEM had incorrectly interchanged the data from Almy's Brook in Little Compton with the data from Sapalit Cove in Tiverton. In an email from DEM water quality supervisor, Lucinda Hannes, she recognized the error in reporting and stated that, quote, since your application is near station GA4-17, Sapalit Cove, the fecal coliform variability comments would not apply to those waters. That station has been consistently in compliance, remaining low and fairly constant since at least 2016. Our formal proposal was submitted in April, 2020. And according to Mr. Butel, addressed all of the concerns raised at the preliminary determination hearing. Our 30-day public comment period began on April 17th and was scheduled to expire on May 17th, 2020. At the request of Chairman Cox, our public comment period was granted an extension until June 2nd of 2020. Also noteworthy is the fact that a link to our proposal and application was posted on the homepage of the Town of Tiverton official website. The overwhelming majority of correspondents received and on file for this proposal is positive and supportive. Included among that correspondence is a letter from Mr. Philip Capaldi, who thanked us for our modifications and complimented us on our character for discussing his concerns with him after the hearing. There have been no letters of opposition received from adjacent property owners. We have personally discussed our proposal with no fewer than three nearby property owners, all of whom have been supportive and expressed interest in the proposal. A letter was received in June of 2020 from DEM's Divisions of Marine Fisheries and Fish and Wildlife, commending us for our revisions in, um, in the proposal and stating that they have no objections. Our application has been reviewed by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, and they have issued a permit for our proposed activities. In the summer of 2020, CRMC Aquaculture Coordinator Dave Butel retired and has been replaced by Mr. Ben Getch, who is here on this Zoom call this evening. A procedural shellfish survey of our proposed site conducted by Mr. Getch yielded zero cohogs per square meter. As we discussed at our initial hearing more than a year ago, the accessibility of this site could be ideal 
for educational purposes. We have reached out to a teacher in the Tiverton School Department, as well as faculty and administration in the Marine Science Departments at Roger Williams University and the University of Rhode Island, indicating our willingness to work with students from grade school to graduate school. We look forward to the possibility that this small farm could become a place where young and old alike could learn about the wonders of the natural world and the benefits of high quality locally produced seafood. We intend to sell our oysters locally, keeping our carbon footprint small and allowing local people to share in the bounty of our efforts. This commission has raised concerns that this farm would disrupt the food chain and negatively affect the ecosystem in the Sakonet River. It is important to note that oyster farming is almost universally regarded favorably for the ecosystem services it provides, including its ability to reduce coastal nutrient loads and improve water clarity. The Nature Conservancy recently established a new program called Supporting Oyster Aquaculture and Restoration through which they purchased 5 million oysters from farmers to create oyster reefs for water quality improvements. Additionally, nearby municipalities in Massachusetts are planting oysters to assist in meeting total maximum daily load requirements as mandated by the EPA's Clean Water Act. This commission has also expressed concerns that oyster cages will have a negative effect on fish habitat. However, researchers at the University of Rhode Island in 2004 actually found that shellfish aquaculture gear provides substantially better habitat value than shallow unvegetated seabed and equivalent or better than submerged aquatic vegetation. Oyster aquaculture is an important part of the history and heritage of the state of Rhode Island and of the town of Tiverton. We have deep rooted interests in this community and appreciate the opportunity to be model stewards of the area. We firmly believe that this small oyster farm will have a positive effect on the local environment, the local economy, and will shine a favorable light on the town of Tiverton itself. We look forward to working with the Tiverton Harbor Commission as our project moves forward. We thank you for taking the time to hear us this evening and we're happy to answer any questions that the commission may have at this time. Thank you very much. Um, and my apologies if I happen to be craning my head back. I'm not looking down the nose, trying to get my no, no apologies. It's, it's, a, it's a Zoom thing where I can see yeah, where I, where I can see the screen because it's not a normal sight. Um, very good. Uh, do you by any chance have the ability to screen uh, screen share and show where you're? I know you moved outboard by quite a bit. I know that Mr. Getch uh, here this evening, the CRMC Aquaculture Coordinator, may have that information on hand. Ben, can yeah, you see? You, you want to see the, the, the difference in the maps? Actually, you know, let me let me try. Uh, give me one second. No. There likely would not be a map from our original preliminary determination, but our present proposal would be. While he's doing that, hey, this is Greg. I'm taking the minutes. Donna, are you uh, Donna Cook from town council? Yes. Muted. Yes, Greg, that is Donna Cook. Okay, thank you. I'm still mu muted, Donna. I, I just realized that, yes, I'm here. Thank you.
I, ha I had a question about the farm. This is Tyler, the Harbor Master. Sure, Tyler. Go right ahead. How do you do, Tyler? Good. Um, the buoys that are out there right now, is that from the first proposed um, oyster farm or are those updated? Those buoys represent the four corners of our proposal. The All right. So th those are up updated to what you, you want to do right now. That's correct. All righty. Hey, Tyler, do you know if there's a mooring um, present within that area? I believe um, previously there was one existing mooring within the footprint, um, if that's correct. Yeah, I believe there was uh, one resident, but it's not in. Um, okay. He hasn't used it in a few years. But I, I looked at it. I actually looked at the proposed farm. I think it was Saturday or Sunday. I seen all the buoys out there. But there's no moorings over in that area. Good. Apologies, but um, I'm just, I had to remotely log into my work computer. So let's see if I can make this work here. Um, so I can scroll down a little bit. Okay, so th this is the site as, um, proposed right now. Am I, um, you hearing me okay? Or am I a little choppy? You're coming through, Ben, fine. Okay, good. So um, you get- Sound good. This is how it's proposed currently. I do have a Google map image that I put together myself. Um, see if I can get that up, where'd it go? There you go. So this is, um, a little zoomed in, but you can see the shoreline up here. The yellow pins represent the new form. The red pins represent the old form. And on this particular Google Earth image, you can see a mooring um, over here. It is rather further away with the new shape. Um, I measured that using G the, you know, the Google Earth at about 60, 60 plus feet, maybe. Um, so that's, that's kind of what we're looking at. I have another version that might be a little more zoomed out. Let me just see here. Yes. All right, so that you can see that's a little more of the landscape there. But yeah, the, you can see that the pins are doubled up on this point here, so they, both, both uh, proposals share that coordinate, but you can see it's, uh, it was kind of longer and skinnier, extended more into the channel, and it was brought uh, further south and, and moved inland just a little bit and made more of a, a rectangular shape. Hmm. Hmm. So I'm the one who raised the issue about the uh, impact on the on the uh, on the whole river, right? Because there is much that comes washing out of the Sapawit Marsh, and that is supplying the food chain not only just right there, but what happens there has downstream, downriver consequences. This is an improvement. Glad to see it. We still see they're creeping in on where the channel is there. You can see that channel, right? You know, it right now goes between the outboard most, well, yeah, yellow pin and uh, uh, red pin that's uh, got the Bowen 1.0 on it. So this is clearly an improvement compared to have where it was before. Wish they'd been a little bit further away, but this is an improvement. Hey, 
And you say you've spoken to the uh, the, the uh, riparian owners there on the, on the point. We have spoken to three people, all of whom own property in the immediate vicinity of budding the water there. Uh, how about these three people that are most oh. most prevalent there? Uh, one of them is is directly in front that we have spoken to. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anyone else have any comments or questions of the Bowen brothers? Uh, yeah, this is Andy. I'm just a little bit confused. It, it could be that it's the angle that his Google Earth um, is is oblique. But when I when I, I plotted this, and maybe I plotted it incorrectly, but I got a very a fairly long and thin plot, and I didn't plot the old Bowens, so I don't have anything to compare it to. But it, but my, and my plot looks very different. Can you share it? I think so. Yeah. I'm... I mean, these these coordinates have been verified by uh, DEM. They use a particular coordinate format. Uh, it's a decimal only. Uh, the coordinates I used were the coordinates that were vetted by DEM, and they line up with the DEM map that was provided with the application. Well, let's okay. see. Let's start off with that. Tell me if you can, can see that. This is a different application you're looking at here. This is, uh, this is Google mm -hmm. Earth. But this is, a different, this is a different aquaculture application. Andy, uh, I think that's the uh, yeah. Boring and Lundgren application you got plotted there. Ah, okay. Right. It's further uh, south, right? Well, right? That's interesting because these are the ones I must have the wrong app. Okay, I get it. I've got the wrong application. Yeah, never mind. On your screen there. Where, where yeah. going, brother? I, I was I was reading the wrong document. So uh, I apologize, and I will turn the screen back over to you if I can figure out how to do that. I guess not, I guess my share is over. Okay, thank you. Any other members have questions before I start asking a couple? Yeah, um, Patrick, when you talked to the resident over there, did you talk to a Metcalf that lived there? I have not spoken with them. All right, because that's the only morning question that would be really close there. Okay, um, no, the I have one. Not I have not the seen. other one directly in front doesn't have a mooring. I, okay. I have a question for you, Tyler. Is, is that Metcalf mooring directly off um, the bend at Driftwood Drive? There's a little bit um, of like an, an access no, area. For, no, so that'd be further north. Further north from there? Because I went, yeah, so I'll, they're, they're, I'll, I'll tell you, I went through every historical aerial photo I could find of this on, on Google Earth, and there was no mooring within the area that I could see. The closest one I found was the one that's directly off the bend on Driftwood Drive. There was questionably a mooring ball further north, but also west of that point, and actually farther away from the site than the, the mooring I observed off of Driftwood Drive. Yeah, no, it might be further away. That's the only uh, resident over there that has one that would be near the farm. Everyone else, Morins are further south of that farm and wouldn't interfere at all. It's just that one neighbor, that's the only thing I was thinking of. Okay. Once, once a site like this uh, is put in place, what are the, the rules or maybe it's just a common sense thing on a new mooring? What's the closest a new mooring could get established to an established aqua farm? Just curious. I, you know, moorings are, you know, managed by the town here. Uh, there's no CRMC regulation other than you're not allowed to put a mooring on the lease. So if, as long as it was off the lease, CRMC doesn't have a problem with it. It would, I guess, come down to what's practical. I would say that the gear based on their gear layout um, in the application, it doesn't go all the way out to the the boundaries. There's a bit of a buffer. So, um, you know, while the, a mooring might be 
say close to uh, the boundary of the lease, it's actually even still quite a bit further away from any gear that might be in the water. Okay, that helps. So if I remember right, there's basically DEM property north of there where the beach is and for a while further north. That's right. correct. There's a DEM fishing access point there in a, in a restoration effort that was done with, with, in concert with CRMC and DEM. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm, my memory's right. So it would be anything that's north of there would be beyond that, and not typically close, certainly nowhere near where a boat could swing to it or anything like that. So. Now this is Chair again. Um, so you, Patrick and, and brother, you are, John, um, you said you're gonna be managing it now, work servicing it off of a boat of some kind. Um, do you have a, a spot to, to service the boat from? I mean, in the sense of dockage lined up or a commercial site to offload your load and that kind of thing? So we do have, uh, I have experience in the commercial fishing industry, both lobstering and trap fishing. Mm -hmm. um, I do know people who have commercial docks. At this point in time, we are prepared to service the site with a boat. I have a traditional 18 foot quahog and skiff with a 50 horse motor on it that we would seek to do, uh, seek to use public boat ramps in order to access that. And how about your uh, livestock that you'd be you know, harvesting? Would that be brought into the boat and then the boat up the, the boat ramp? It would be brought to the necessary commercial space in order to sell it. Mm -hmm. by, using, by using, loading the skiff with the, with the product, and then hauling the skiff and going to the site, or are you going to be going up to like Guido's up in uh, Bristol, which has a, you know, dockside offload? Um, yeah, well, at this point in time, um, we haven't made any contracts with anyone mm -hmm. to sell it. I, we got to grow them first before we can sell them, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Sakonet Point is just down the river, which could be a place that it's, uh, it's offloaded onto a commercial dock as well. Okay, so there's there's sites down in the Sakana uh, Basin that could could uh, take your load of shellfish. Sure. Yeah. All right. Any other questions of any of the members of the board, the commission? And I just want to say that I'm pleased to hear it doesn't go all the way out; it moves it further out from that outflow. So that's good. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, looking at the participants, I don't know as we have any we have 12 participants and I'm seeing nine of them on my screen here. I no. believe Brad Bowinger is still an attendee. He, he uh, sent me an email saying he is in the waiting room. Okay. There he is. There he is. All right. So that's our 12. Um, so our self, I guess there's no public comment. Donna, did you have anything you wanted to say? You're our liaison from the uh, council. You have to unmute yourself, Donna. Yeah, um, I don't, I, I'm not here to interfere in, uh, thank you for, for asking. It looks like they've uh, uh, changed their uh, map of what they were gonna do. Um, personally, I don't have a problem with it. The only thing, I'm not sure if I'm getting it confused with, uh, another application where there was um, these uh, floating, floating type of uh, uh, oyster culture above the water, or you're. It doesn't look like you're. Are you doing that? Yes. Yeah, so uh, no, it was. Um, if I may. Yeah. Um, from from the time when we met with this commission a year ago, we made it abundantly clear that it was really important for us that there not be any visual interruption at the site. And so we intentionally uh, have planned it such that all of our gear will be submerged. There will be corner buoys marking the bounds of the site and we're willing to um, put them at whatever size the CRMC or this, this commission might recommend in order to um, keep boats away. But so uh, everything that we would have would be submerged. Thank you. Uh, Tyler, I'd like your comments Beautiful. on the corner markers. 
You got to mute yourself down there. Yeah. Um, I mean, that area, it's so shallow. If a boat's going over there, they're pretty much running aground as it is. You don't see many boats over there. Um, so I don't need, think there's any need for lit corner markers or ridiculously huge corner markers. So I'll just annoy the neighbors more than be beneficial at all. All right. Interesting. Very good. Yeah, yeah. I would add, I would add CRMC wouldn't require anything uh, special for quarter markers here. They would require to be, um, you know, at least the size of kind of your lobster pot buoy and they would have the number of the ascent, you know, the permit number on them. Um, but other than that, um, other, other things like floating gear would, would require um, more specialized marking. The only craft I've seen in there are kayaks. Will they be able to identify where your traps are okay? Absolutely. Um, you know, we've, we've spoken about this, uh, about the possibility that, as noted, the location is such that it, it enables a place where we might be able to act in a positive light and, and show the benefits of aquaculture to people who might be kayaking by, who, who would be able to kayak right over the site with, without interruption. I see. Do you know what the mean water loader mean low water mark is there? It's between two and four feet. Oh, I see. Huh. So your traps are not that high. So mean. So it, it differs uh, around the site. Of but course. Generally speaking, it, it goes uh, between twenty-four and fifty-four, forty-eight inches, something like that. Yeah. Southwest corner is about fifty-four inches. Uh huh. And the nearest one is about twenty-four. And your traps don't come out of the water at 24 inches. That's correct. That correct? Um, as noted on our application, they're uh, 16 inches uh -huh. from the runners on the bottom to the top okay. of the cage. Very so similar to a lobster. Trap might hit your traps if they didn't see it. So that'd be the worst case. Okay, thanks. Thank you. So members of the commission, anyone care to make a motion at this point if they've got more comments? Make a motion to pass it. I think it's a great, great program. And I think they've done a really good job. May I have a second to Mr. Stewart's motion? I'll second. That would be Jason. All right. All those in favor, uh, Dave Stewart. Dave Stewart, roll vote. Okay. Um, Greg Banner. Yes. Uh, Andy Sundberg. Yes. Charles Lawrence. Aye. Jason Claremont. Aye. And the chair votes aye. You got a unanimous approval this time, gentlemen. Thank you very much for working with Thank us. Thank you very much yeah, for your consideration. We look forward to working with you and uh, maybe some of you guys like oysters. We'll look forward to seeing you in the future. <laughs> I know uh, there's some there's some demand in the Cox household for those. We look, we look forward, forward to it. it. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Everybody. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Ben Getsch. Thanks, Ben. Good job. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, so the next Thanks, item, staying in a Thanks new, Ben. Staying in a new business zone and that Ben is also involved in is the uh, Boehringer and Lundgren application uh, 2021-02054. Um, which has previously run the preliminary determination received a green light from this group. That's the um, site that Andy had actually the coordinates for <clears throat> before. And they've given us a new application that shows those coordinates um, more thoroughly. Um, I'd sent that around to the group and actually got one piece of correspondence and that was uh, from DEM and their comment was they don't have any objection to it. Um, um, Mr. Lunger is online. So good evening, sir. Hey, yeah, good evening, guys. I think Travis is afar and unable to put on the video right now. Oh, okay. Uh, but I'm Brad Berenger. I haven't introduced or met you guys in the past. But I'll be speaking on behalf of both of us. If there's anything to ask. I got to compliment you on the new chart that you sent with the, the full formal application showing 
the existing anchor farm and the approximate of yours to it. It uh, made it very clear. To you. Right. Yeah. So have you made any other changes at all, Brad? Uh, no, no. We, I think there was, no, I think between the time of our first meeting and now we haven't altered anything, no. Mm -hmm. um, whereas this is technically a formal, now not a preliminary term determination, but the formal application where I run quickly through what you, what your proposal is in case as this is a recorded um, Zoom meeting, uh, so that we can have a, a record of what your proposal is that's a, that we'd be voting on this evening. Right, yeah. So the floor is yours, Brad. Oh, Bruce, I misheard you. I thought you said that you were <laughs> going to state it. Um, yeah, we're applying for a, a 2.96 acre floating farm. Um, we have floating cages that are pictured in our, uh, floating cages, floating trays that are pictured in our PDF applets online. And we also have, uh, bottom cages that are also pictured that run the perimeter lengths of the lease. And we have, I think it's important part of the farm is notifying the the public of it and having these solar powered corner markers versus the previous application to just be more noticeable because we are more of a, a, a hazard to voters than just the previous option. I have sailed through that territory. Yeah. Six feet. You got a map you can share with us? Um, or Andy I, had one. I, I can bring one up if you guys okay. don't have one handy. That'll help us do it Hold on. Give me a, this should be quicker. I don't think I have to go back to my work computer this way. Okay, so here's the um, public notice. Let me get down to the map. Here we go. So this is um, the vicinity of Sapawa Point. Um, this long rectangular site is the proposed uh, area. It's currently in, uh, you know, in public notice. This is the existing uh, Carlberg uh, site, uh, which has been there for a number of years. That is a sub, uh, submerged cage site. Um, so this is nautical chart again, this area, uh, the hash yellow line uh, is the DEM recreational shell fishing area. So you can see it's intentionally positioned just outside of that. Uh, I should say it's, I think about 400 feet offshore. Um, yeah, this diagram shows some of the rough distances, though it's not terribly legible at this scale, but um, you can see uh, 400 feet from the shore, about 300 feet from the jetty, and about 400 feet from the other lease, and, and um, it's about 200 feet at its closest to the, to the edge of the, the channel there. Um, and to look at some of the gear diagrams. So, Rotate that. There we go. So here's a cross section of what the farm looks like. Um, he has two types of gear proposed: uh, floating cages and floating trays. The difference between the two is really one is just 
smaller than the other, uh, similar system otherwise. And these are the trays in the, the cages uh, in the winter position. They are sunk in the winter. Uh, they can also be sunk ahead of a, uh, a storm warning, something like that. One of the advantages of this gear. Um, and this would be a bottom cage, uh, which they would be using as well to, to uh, store oysters on the bottom. Uh, again, another cross section of the area. Let's see, I turn it back around. So here's a picture of what the cage looks like. Um, you see the pontoons, and this is actually a tray, the wire tray below it. Uh, it's another picture of what this gear looks like, and that is the gear in a line. As you can see, the line is bending uh, ever so slightly in the in the tide. Uh, this is a picture of the of the applicant's current farm, which is in Point Judas Pond. Uh, so they've been farming in this manner for. I believe a number of years now, maybe maybe, maybe five years, I think. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so um, they're familiar with this type of gear. Um, it's worked for them in the past, and uh, they're hoping it will will perform well for them here as well. Is there anything else you guys would like to look at? Would you bring us back to the map that shows us where it is with respect to South Pilot Point? Yeah. So. Rotate that around. Okay, so here's here it is on the nautical. Here's the the Bowen application down here in the corner. That that you can see is the original uh, form, but not the one we just looked at. Um, so they are there's the bridge, the DM area, parking area is here. This is quite a ways around the corner. Uh, there's two stone jetties here. Um, there's uh, really no houses directly on the shoreline here. It's kind of farmland. Um, and as I mentioned, they're about 400 feet offshore. Thank I can, you. I can, one last look at the aerial if you want, you can see kind of the, the land use pattern here. Mm -hmm. right, I'll stop that there. Does anyone have any questions of the um, applicant? Same question as earlier, the uh, access to the site, boats, uh, and offloading of product, what, what's the plan for that? Um, we have two different uh, Carolina skiffs that are both in action right now, being used for the same gear and down in Point Judith Pond, and one of them is going to be brought up to either Don's Marine or one of the commercial uh, marinas that's up between the bridges. Um, the moment we find out that this is able to be pushed through and um, we can start putting gear out, we'll probably just be um, trailering one of the Carolina skiffs to be able to do that because it'll only take a few different days to set up the farm. Um, but then once we get into routine and scheduled work, like weekly work on the farm, will secure a space with one of the marinas. And at one of those commercial marinas, we'll be able to offload the, the shellfish. Now, what are the corner markers on that farm going to be? That's Tyler, our harbor master, making that question. Yeah, so, so Tyler, for, for a farm like this, I asked the, the applicants to include it in their full application, but it would probably be something CRMC would uh, condition, uh, given approval anyway, and that is to use um, solar powered lighted buoys. Um, they have you know lights on them and um, they also have a high flyer, like a radar reflector. Um, so they're, they're, they're not huge, you know, they're not like, you know, uh, real giant or anything, but they're, they're enough to have the high flyer and a, and a little light on it. Some of them kind of look like, um, like a yellow safety cone or something floating on the water. That'll be perfect. Yeah, they've worked out well. We, it's something that was adapted um, over various applications on other parts of Narragansett Bay. Uh, first around Fox Island, uh, which is kind of off of Wixford. It was a suggestion actually by the Coast Guard and we've adopted that 
um, actually for, for, for most farms that, that could benefit from that kind of aid to navigation. And it's something that the, the applicant, when they have it installed, can actually register with the Coast Guard too, so they know it's there. And I do have a question regarding, um, because we, we are looking at the marinas there, and one of the places, I think the Burgess guy might go out of this uh, area. There's a, there seems to be some sort of facility with a, a tall piling um, docking area. That's like one lane long. That's at the head of Nanaquacket. And I wasn't sure if, if you guys knew who ran that facility or what that actually is, that space. I personally do not know who manages or owns that. Uh, other board members may. Members may. Yeah, so that's the old Manchester's uh, seafood over there. And I believe uh, Rob Walsh is actually taking care of it right now for the owner. He actually has his fishing boat over there. Okay. Is that um, active? Yeah, is so Rob... Rob has two fishing boats there. He goes out in the summer with, and there's another one there. Um, someone else owns, but he's usually down there. He's got a black truck. He's usually down there once a day or every other day. Okay. In Manchester, that's a seafood wholesaler or a market or. Uh, it used to be. That's where they were trying to put in a bed and breakfast and that didn't go through. So now they just have a few fishing boats there and they're still working on the building. Oh, wow. Any idea of what they're trying to recreate there? I have no clue. Wow, yeah, that's a neat space. That'd be interesting to say. It's, it's, it's actively on the market. Wow. The property is, the property is up for sale. Huh. So, who knows gotcha. what's going to happen? Gotcha. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it, Tyler. Yeah, we had a young oh, offshore fisherman um, has several offshore rigs investigating that in the because of the channel depths and limitations his rigs are, are large. I mean, his smallest vessel is what, 60 some odd feet and his largest is 90 some odd feet. Wow. We pointed out to him that the um, channel is, is suffering some uh, infiltration from the Nanakwaket point itself. And uh, so he didn't have as much depth as he might need. And we have not heard back from him. That's two years ago, I guess, hmm. uh, that we spoke with him. He came before the commission. Gotcha. That might be a good good spot. I mean, they do actively have, and there's a there's a fish market right there, as well. Yeah, it seems it seems like a nice. If there's already commercial activity, that's kind of where you we found it's easiest to to stay close to, mm -hmm. wherever it's being accepted and working. That's usually a little more ideal. But yeah, thank you guys. That's that's good info. Any questions of the group? There's no other public involvement. I will entertain a motion, please, relative to John, uh, rather relative to this application. Brad and, and Travis. Uh, this is Andy. I move that we accept the application. I'll second that. So Andrew Sumberg and Charles Lawrence Move the, move the recommendation of approval. Uh, roll call vote. Dave Stewart. Aye. Greg Banner. Aye. Uh, Andy, you made the motion, so you're an aye, I presume? Yes. Okay. Charles Lawrence. Aye. Jason Claremont. Aye. The vote, chair votes aye as well. Unanimous gentlemen, we'll be sending a letter off. Not this week, but next week to Coastal to um, Ben saying that our commission recommends approval. That's a good site for this. Uh, I'm sure there'll be a certain amount of lift service. We'll get about floating cages, but once people get used to them, um, I don't think there'll be any issue. They're not the, they're not the white slimy looking ones. They're black until they'll blend into the background far better. Yeah, we, we really appreciate working with you guys on this uh, the past few months and I know Travis has done a lot of the legwork and wish he had a voice right now to say thank you. Um, but yeah, we really appreciate it. And we, you have our emails and phone and through Ben and whatever needs to happen can happen. So hopefully we see this through. And thank you guys. Good luck. All right, Good appreciate luck. it.
Have a good night. Thank you. Uh, ben from CRMC, I just have a question for you. Yeah. Tyler asking. Um, so that, that Berg aquaculture that's over there, what's the requirements for upkeep on the farm? Well, um, specifically the farm isn't allowed to have gear off, off the, you know, outside the boundaries of the site. Mm -hmm. Um, so they need to, they need to maintain that at least he has, uh, submerged cages. So not likely they would float away. Um, no, but I, I've had an issue last summer where his gear was up on the beach and his corner oh. marker broke free. And okay. I, he, so I haven't, I haven't seen him out there for a while. So I, if I seen I, him out there, I would talk to him, but yeah, last time I, I did talk to him, he was a uh, rather busy commercial fishing, um, but if you do, for future reference and all, all members here, um, if you do observe aquaculture gear where it's not supposed to be, you, you can call me. It is my responsibility to um, ensure the farms are abiding by the terms of their permits. And as I said, one of them is if, if any gear does break free from the, the lease or go outside the lease, they have technically 30 days to clean it up and get it back. However, um, you know, the sooner I can get that information to them, the better. Most cases, these guys don't want their gear just, you know, uh, up there on the shore. Um, so, you know, let, let me know and I will do my best to, to get it addressed uh, through working with the farmer. Um, I do have to inspect the, the four corners of the farm is most often what it is looked at um, as far as annual inspection, especially for a farm, you can't see most of it, it's underwater. So I just ensure that the, the accuracy and the placement of those four buoys, those four corners of where they're supposed to be. Um, beyond that, they have to report to the CRMC uh, their annual you know, uh, harvest and investment. So if they don't have a sales for a period of, of two years, that's actually grounds for revoking the lease. Uh, they can in the alternative show that, well, they didn't make sales during two years, but they put investment into it. So they would have to show a certain amount of investment was made in, in the lease, um, you know, to, to keep, to, for it to remain active. Um, and I should, you know, I also would mention that, um, you know, every farmer is a little different. Every, every farmer kind of maintains their farm differently. And, and when a farm is underwater, it's, it's quite hard to know exactly, um, you know, if, if things really are bad. If they are, I, I will, you know, I'll go in and we can do a survey with a video camera um, or, you know, we can get a diver in the water even. But it, it, that's rarely the case. All right. Yeah, when I get the boat back in, I'll take a ride back again. I just know a lot toward the end of last year that his gear was starting to go around and there's new owners over there so that they don't. They don't really want that on their beach over there. Yeah, if you see it, please let me know. Um, you know, the, the the chair has my my contact info. Um, I I've actually received calls from from the public, and you know they say, oh, there's something here on my beach, and usually I can figure out who it belongs to and, and get them to go clean it up. So. All right, perfect. Thank you. No problem. Okay, so um, returning to the top of the chart of the agenda, we had a minutes approved. Public comment section action cannot be taken on by motion and topic raised. Any public comments from anyone at this point? Okay, seeing none, I uh, will move on to construction reports, of which there are none, um, other than take it up at the bottom. Um, sea level rise, Charles Lawrence. Chip, thank you very much for a great presentation last month. That was excellent. Um, excellent. Thank you. Donna um, Cook, could I ask, is, is the, have you brought this to the attention of the uh, town council in general, the concept of having Chip address the council on the sea level rise issue? 
Uh, no, I, I didn't know I was supposed to. Okay. Uh, I didn't. All right. I, I didn't know if we had a chance. That was one of the things that we thought would be good for the town councilors to hear from Dr. Lawrence, what sea level rise is going to look like in Tiverton in the not too distant future and what should be entertained now to preserve and protect the property and the people of, of Tiverton. Well, um, what I was sent today was, uh, I'll send it to Chip to look it over, but um, down in uh, the Chesapeake Bay area, um, they did a very big study with um, the Netherlands because they're below sea level and they got some very uh, interesting ideas. So I can send that to Chip. Um, Thank you. Uh, I, I'm, I know some stuff, there's something going on. The only thing is, is that, you know, I have different feelings about how it's to be taken care of. And the, the problem with calling it, you know, climate change, first it was global warming, then climate change. And, you know, uh, the world's gonna fall apart in nine years. And I don't know, it's almost like chicken little. And I, basically when you look over where it's actually You just go. You, can anyone else hear Donna? No, we we can't hear you. Donna, we can't hear you. Andrew Rye, is that something you can address? Um, can you hear me? No, it's in and out, Donna. Still... Yeah. yeah. So I will. Um... I will send uh, Chip that that report, and yes, uh, maybe I can talk to Chip on the phone. Right? Could you ask if, the chair, if you ask the, you ask the uh, chair of the council if they'd appreciate a presentation by Chip? Okay. Um, we're just in the middle of, the, of, of budget right now, so I I don't know if you want it now or if you just want to wait until. Well, we can wait till after budget. After after budget is fine, but you know, get it on the horizon because it's you know that's how you get things. Put it on the agenda. All right, we'll do. Thank you. Well, when you want it for March, uh, they they did move the um, the FTR to July seventeenth. So I mean, there's been a real quandary. And th that that's about all I can talk about because of course, what I'm talking about is not on your agenda. So um, I'll put it on the agenda. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Um, now in terms of correspondence, I already revealed the DPW's email relative to the Boeing and Lundgren um, agriculture application. I have sent around to you the CRMC rule makings on the cable corridors, which is actually an item in our new business. Um, and the Bowen brothers revised application. I believe I sent that, but today they did a good presentation. Um, on to old business now, Sipowit and Fogland boat ramp. Um, with the on again, off again, weather we've had while I've called, reached out to the DPW um, I'm not surprised that I haven't been heard back. I think you had high, more pressing things than, than my concerns about those two items um, in this immediate last month when you had, you know, one moment you had snow, next moment you had ice. I, they, I've been impressed with the way they managed it, this, the uh, town, but so that's sitting. Uh, the investigation according to the U.S. Geology Survey um, Correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Andy. We, did we conclude that the, the data that was available was so narrow that it wasn't really of much use to us? Uh, we did, but it was a false conclusion. <laughs> <laughs> it turned out that what they did was in they did the main survey in 2017. Then they went back and they did a center channel survey in 2018 just to see if there was any shifting. And I had the 2018 data loaded and I couldn't load the 2017 data. So I, I had it wrong. So, so the data is more robust than what I thought. And 
I've made really, um, I have no idea at the end of the day whether it'll be useful to us, but I have made a fair amount of progress. I got two of the geology guys uh, on the phone from London a few days ago. They were on vacation, which they tend to take long ones out there. Uh, and they walked me through being able to visualize some of the data and I'm making progress. What I have is the, um, I have the survey data, I have contours. I'm trying to get labels on the contours showing the depth. All of the um, depth data is, um, is um, standardized on mean low, low water. So it is, so it is good data. And so I'm still working with it. And uh, at the end of the day, I, I'll probably be able to tell you a fair amount about it. Uh, on the other hand, I don't know whether it'll fundamentally be more useful than the current, uh, the, the current vector charts from OpenCPM. The other thing that, I'm, that I discovered uh, just today is I can take the OpenCPM vector charts and I can overlay them on top of the um, GIS data and get some type of a rationalization. Let me quickly just show you what. So if you can see that, tell me if you can see it or not. Yeah, I can see it. Okay, so this is in fact the survey that they did. And now I've got a good um, indication of the land as well. And they go from the mouth pretty much from the mouth of this conet right up through into the basin and then up to Mount Hope Bay. And essentially they end at the, at the power plant. So this is the survey data. Uh, these are the contours and I'll try and get the labels in there. And there is a mix of both raster and vector data. And, you know, probably by our next meeting, I'll, I'll be able to, to conclusively get the data to sing and then we can decide whether it means anything to us or not. Spectacular. Very impressive. <laughs> that, 80, that 80 foot deep hole right next to the uh, island, that's uh, always intrigues me that that even exists. And the, well, the torrents there, my God. That's the stone bridge. We're just south of the stone bridge right oh, there. Sure. And that, this, is a, this is the stone bridge here. So, so it is interesting. I don't understand. I don't fully understand it yet. But when I get the when I get the depth uh, labels in there, that'll help me uh, help me some. These I do know these contours are one meter increments. That I do know. And so I've got still got a fair amount a fair amount to go. But I made a lot of progress. I'm having fun. If that wow. matters. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Oh, good. All right, so we'll keep that sticking around. Next item is a dinghy landing at Stonebridge Abutment, which uh, has more, and that's old business, but it's, it's new business. Uh, and you'll see down in the new business, the last item is a Stonebridge docks. One of the things I found out in uh, meeting with the budget committee this past Saturday, not this immediate past Saturday, but the prior one, is that with the COVID budget problems and whatnot, the, the uh, lot of capital stuff did not get spent. So that capital money was pooled by the uh, council. And it's my understanding that they have passed themselves a motion to use that pooled capital money and, and fund the $10,000 capital budget item that we had hoped for last year uh, and got green lighted and then COVID hit. Uh, and so indeed, the ability to do the dock system. And that's, I know I'm jumping way down the, the agenda, but that's why the, the uh, dinghy landing at Stonebridge Abutment is still a real valid point to be worked on, I think, uh, with, the, with the owner of that site and, and see what we can do. Um, now going down to the flood, mit, flood hazard mitigation grants, I have not been able to reach out to the, the two guys that I spoke the, with at National Grid. That's just my my failing, and I apologize to you for that. I'll make every effort to get on that for April. Um, Agriculture Ordinance and Harbor Management Plan and Corporations. Um, I, I think those are basically the same two items that we, Agriculture Ordinances 
which are obviously controlled by CRMC, but we can certainly have our positions on it known. Um, and then the idea of doing the Harbor Management Plan. Could we do a Zoom meeting with uh, Greg and Jason? You were the two guys at the last, and I'm not sure, Andy, were you on board at the, when we no. out? Yeah. Um, they had, you know, projectures, projections of the um, site up on the screen at the Yacht Club. Uh, we could, I could buy a Zoom license or whatever they call it that you not limited to 40 minutes on. And we could do some Zoom meeting with uh, screen sharing. Does, does that have any appeal to people? Uh, it, it appeals to me. And my wife has a Zoom license that yeah. under most circumstances we can use. So we probably wouldn't have to buy another one. Okay. And then there's other there are other tools as well. Um, you know, if, if this has to be a public conversation. It does. Okay. So. Technically, but I mean, you know, there are lots of public conversations that take place that, you know, you notice them and nobody comes. But that's what you have to do in case someone has. Well, this, this town Zoom system is available to us, is it not? Why are uh, we? Discussing another one. No, uh, the town system is available to us so long as there's not other demand. So it gets a little awkward. A lot of, yeah. you know, for 100, I think it's 150 bucks for a license for a year. So it's not exactly going to break or break the bank. Um, but if, if a cert, I don't want to reinvent the wheel. If Andy's got access to one, even if he has to drive his wife's car, <laughs> uh, you want to check with her, Andy, and let me know that that that's cool. Or... Uh, it's all a matter of it's all a matter of when we choose to meet. If she if she's using it for work, then we can't. But she uses it very intermittently. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, it's wide open, and we can use it any time we want. Okay. So if we pick a time, uh, then I just have to clear it with her. All right. So just for, for methodology, though there's a lot of material to go through. So we're looking at, I guess, just to get on with it is just to schedule time periods and say, you know, we'll do an hour, you know, maybe as long as our brain cells will work and start at the beginning and just start working through it in, in our segments. Is that kind of the thought? That's, that's my thought to be compliant with the open meeting rules. I, I found out the other night when uh, at the open meeting seminar, I always thought, you know, we're an advisory commission. We're not required by the, um, the open meeting laws to always post our minutes and such. Well, we are an advisory commission, not an advisory committee. So in uh, deference to the solicitor, I'm going to start putting our minutes at the Secretary of State site, and I hope they don't bollocks it up too much. Um, because it's, it's not that hard, it's just one more step um, to be done. Um, so yeah, it's as I recall, no one wants Friday nights. We already meet on Monday night. Um, you know, and it depends on my professional position. It's all over the ballpark where when I'm working at night and when I'm not. Uh, so it, you can't run anything by me and say the guaranteed I'm there. But I think this ship runs fine without me. <laughs> um, so why don't we select? There's, there's a, um, a calendaring site. What's it called? Um, something like Doodle or some, something like that. Yeah. Let me check. Andy, if I could impose upon you to do that, if you set up some kind of calendaring thing and send it around to the boards and we can get our preference dates to the members. Sure. Sure. I can do that. And then we can, you know, I'll click on what will work for us. And if we have a known conflict, we can say that's a known conflict, but all we need is five of us to grind away. And is the idea that you want to meet one night a week for whatever it takes? Or, or more than you know, multiple nights a week if we can. You know, two, okay. You know, if people are game for that, people game for that. I got a smile on Chip's face. Yeah, I mentioned. Yeah, I mean, I'll just tell you, my my work day is all computer and conference calls and stuff, and I'm fairly brain dead. I don't know how many nights I could add on top of you know to do the same thing at night. I mean, one night here and there is fine, and a weekend occasionally is fine, but I, I have my limitations, and I just won't be useful to the cause. You're out, do you? 
I, was I that, second that. Yeah, I mean, I think one session a week is maybe reasonable that I could. And then, that's fine, and we'll be make at least we'll be making progress because we've been paddling, yeah. you know, nowhere this thus far. Great. So if Andy, you'll do that, that'd be great. So you'll put together okay. kind of see what makes best sense for people and you know give priority of you know one two three what's worked best is there anybody who has a night of the week where they absolutely can't do it now first monday of every month yeah and i'm i'm shot on wednesdays mm, fridays are probably not favorable no. so if he, monday no. wednesday and friday who, who 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 was the last one weighing in how about Tuesdays? Okay. Yeah, Tuesdays might be. I don't know. Other than the fact that you, that you don't want to go brain dead, Greg, Tuesdays are okay? All right. So, um, so today's Monday. You want to do one a week from tomorrow? Or do you want to try and get one done tomorrow? Uh, I'd rather do a week from tomorrow because I'm up in Vermont and... I can tell you right now, I uh, need a need a better padded chair than this hard thing I'm sitting on right now. <laughs> okay, I'll send out a Zoom invite for a week from tomorrow, um, seven o'clock. That would make uh, next Tuesday, next Tuesday. I, in fact, I have a professional conflict, but I expect that that will not be too long. It starts at seven thirty, so I can jump in and jump out. Um, and jump back the joy of zoom i can be are, are there other times that are better than seven no i think seven is a good time people have time to get home get dinner and, and then meet um i don't know if you noticed but i shut my camera off a couple times tonight that was when i was putting food in my mouth <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, okay so i'll send out a zoom invite for a week from tomorrow seven o'clock and i'll do one for uh, you know, for, for a couple of successive weeks after that. And we'll see how it goes. That's good. That's good. You need to figure out how, how we work the format. I, I did the, the screen thing when we were at the Yacht Club, but I don't really have my head into the content at all right now. Jason has kind of minded that, but, you know, how do we plan to portray the information and edit it is kind of the question. Well, any one of us can actually take the screen and show the information. Um, J Jason, are you kind of the keeper of the, of the master document at this point? I mean, everybody should have access to it at this point. I've sent it out multiple times. Yes, you have. Google Drive. So um, I don't feel beholden to be keeper of it. Um, I'm unfortunately unable to type right now so i wouldn't be really good at um putting it up on the screen and and keeping keeping along with it i think what's really going to be helpful as we move forward in this is um you know understanding that everything has to be done in the public forum as far as getting it into the management plan is doing some background work um pulling some sections together and getting some language that we can pop in there and then talk about during the meeting, um, you know, nuancing the language, especially when we're talking about the aquaculture, um, I don't know even what we want to call it, but you know, sort of the, the overarching aquaculture language that's going to go. Mm -hmm. so, um, but yeah, I think that the document should be pretty accessible to everybody. It's a really it's a large document because it has a lot of the imagery of the um, uh, coastal access sites in it now that we worked through. Um, so I think we have a pretty good working doc, um, but, but yeah, I think, you know, I think, I think the first meeting will probably be going through the mechanics of how we're going to do this. And then, you know, and as we move forward, I, I think we'll, once we nail that down, uh, we'll, we'll probably be more efficient. Now, now what do we do about public notification? No, uh, we set a time and I just, I put it up. Uh, okay. So that's like next Tuesday. Um, so tomorrow we couldn't do it. We need to have 48 business hours in essence. Okay. Uh, and so for and that's including you know so you can't include weekends or holidays. So for any time I put the agenda for the commission, I have to let like, you see it frequently. It's Wednesday, so that I have Thursday, Friday, 
uh, if I post it on Thursday, I sort of look at the agenda and say, do we have a controversial issue here or not? Uh, is someone going to be upset with a late posting? And technically, they sealed 24 hours. All right, I posted it. We got the round the clock 24 hours. Um, I have posted it to the Secretary of State and sent the email to the town council, or to the town powers that be. It's up Friday and up, up Monday. It's it's playing pretty. You know, if I was dealing something that was dealing with somebody's uh, ability to have a dock that was a controversial dock or an aqua site, I would make darn sure I either posted it earlier or apologized and bounced it up, bounced the meeting. But we're supposed to. I mean, this for rule. This um, we're working on a you know the the document that you got relative to to the uh, CRMCs. Um, proposed rulemaking relative to cable channels is a great example of the whole why you have postings and notifications because um, I'll give you a quick little law lesson here. The, we live in a world where you have states and federal governments. Uh, each government has its ability to make their own laws. What they do in making the laws is they say they, there shall be an entity, we're going to call it DEM, we're going to call it CRMC. And those entities are administrative agencies. They are administering the laws of the state of Rhode Island. And the laws that the Congress passes or the House and, and Senate pass in, in Rhode Island are general laws. This is what we think we want to have done. Do it. And then the agencies are the people that make the regulations, which have the same burden to carry a, a, a power as laws. So you're making rules that are affecting people's lives. Uh, and that's why there's such stringent uh, open meeting law requirements, why um, you know, they do this whole, you know, it's, it's a lot of reading as one person said, and that's just to deal with where the submerged cable should be. And that's actually on our agenda because I want to see if someone, I, I have a couple of thoughts I'd like to say, send back to Postal about that. Um, basically dealing with the same thing we've managed to elicit from these people voluntarily. But that's why open meeting is so important because you know, yeah, it's a harbor management plan, what they do for different, but what if we all of a sudden said, riparian owners can't have moorings? <laughs> right. <laughs> that wouldn't be happiness. Okay, so so um, so I have one more mechanical question, which is when you set up a Zoom meeting, you can set it up one of two ways. One is you give people a password. Mm -hmm. So when they get into Zoom, they have to type in the password. The other way is somebody has to monitor people and you have to let them in when they show up. Um, I, Andrew, I assume the way you've got this set up now is you, you monitor it and you let people in. Um, the, if we do a Zoom meeting, Zoom this, I'm sorry, say again. Stuart's saying send the link, but um, okay. if, if we, if we do, if we, if, if, if I have to let people in, that means I've got to continually look at the sidebar to see if somebody shows up. And if we give people the password, they can let themselves in and we just have to decide which. Oh, I, I've been involved in some of the password ones and it's not hard. You just use, it's a long alpha, you know, it's a, it's a scramble of letters and numbers, but you just write them down accurately and then you can usually get yourself in. Okay, so I'll send an invite where people can type in a password. Right. Okay. Ooh. You can handle it. You can also cut and paste them. Um, so this doesn't have to be open to the public? Oh, yeah. We're, we're making rules, uh, Chip. That's the whole point I was just trying to make is that it has to be open to the public. We're, we are proposing rules, the Harbor Management Plan is rule proposals, the drafting at the very base and it goes before the town council and they bless it uh, after CRMC has said, you know. And I understood that. I just wondered how were they going to deal with the passwords, the public? Yeah, keep it simple, whatever. Bill, you, had looks, you got your hand up a couple of times there. Unmute yourself. Bill, can you unmute yourself? Uh, Andrew? Was that Bill Vieira is over there. There you go. Bill, it looks like you're unmuted. Still can't hear you though. <laughs> uh, Technology is great when it works, it stinks when it doesn't. 
Donna, you're not muted. Go right ahead. Still cannot hear you, Bill. No, I don't. Bill, um, call in, maybe try on your phone. Okay. You're going to try something different. Donna Cook, go ahead. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just, um, I know I'm not part of this commission, but I just wanted to ask a question about, um, you're going to, I was quite interested in this, the uh, aquaculture ordinances or the harbor management plan. Uh, now, you can do it all at once and then have a hearing. I well, don't know how you want to do it. Well, the, way do you it want to the way it's been done in the past, uh, and we, we got jammed up uh, by two things, but um, at any rate, we got jammed up by one administrator. I was later on told by Kevin, very recently told by Kevin Cute, who's the liaison at CRMC, who works with us on the Harbor Management Plan. Uh, he has the all the plans for the state and has been, was very helpful in the past on it, um, that we got jammed up by one of our administrators that we didn't even know about. I mean, we said, we want to present this, we want to present this, and he jammed us up. Um, he was, his, Kevin is a, is a pretty big guy and a, and a hockey player. And if you get Kevin mad, you get, <laughs> it's sometimes physically imposing. Um, but the, um, I don't think we're going to have that problem now. But yeah, we, we would, as a group, we, we develop what we think is a good, good plan. We give it to the town council, say, this is what we think is a good plan. Uh, do you have any questions presented to you? Probably on a, you know, on a uh, very, high level, if you will, um, not getting into the weeds. Um, you can get into the weeds because you'll have the plan yourself if you want to get into the details and ask questions of us. And then with hopefully with a motion from the council, proceed to get go to DEM for water quality permit and then CRMC for blessing. Oh, so it, it doesn't go to a, um, a posted hearing for 21 days in the town? It, it yeah. goes to the DEM? for the council, right. Yes, it's, it's, it has to be posted for 21 days. You have the hearing and yeah. then people can- We, we would have to we'd have to follow the whole process of creating these regulations, correct. Okay. Bill, let's see if you got it on board. Sorry about that. How, wow. how are you guys doing tonight? Great. A uh, couple of things. Um, I did speak to Denise about your presentation. Um, after the last meeting, um, between the COVID and the, uh, and the, the, um, the budget hoping to do it sometime, maybe this summer. Uh, so I wanted you to know, I did speak to Denise regarding it and how that meeting went, but I aware not only are we doing our, our regular meetings, but we're doing workshops and it's just been flat out, uh, pretty busy. So not that it's not important, but uh, all in due time. So we will speak at a later date in regards to that. Um, number two, um, it's good to have the Zoom meetings, but you're going to have to coordinate with other committees. Like maybe tomorrow, uh, next Tuesday is maybe school at that time. So if you are going to work with Tiven and videos and Zoom, you're going to have to, uh, you know, coordinate with other committees too. I, I was watching you on YouTube and just wanted to mention that. Well, I thank you. Um, I, I guess I should check um, about about the um, that um, about can we use a invite. I guess you'd have to talk to Chris about it. Well, uh, I'll talk to yeah. him actually. So I'll, call, I'll call it Mike. Yeah, because he's only allowed to have on the Zoom one meeting a night. You can't have two. Yeah. I, You're right on that, Bill. I think that's what he said. I'm well, always, I know we meet every, every second. They meet every first Monday of the month. We meet every second and fourth Monday of the month. The school committee usually follows us. So, you know, there's always a committee meeting going on at seven o'clock with the, like you said, with the exception of Friday nights. So, uh, 
Um, you know, there are Saturdays, like we, we do a lot of workshops on Saturdays because, uh, but you it's definitely something that I, I, uh, you need to work out with Chris in regards to schedule. And, and well, the I, uh, my first step actually, Bill, I, I think you were doing your get back on board uh, action when we were talking. Uh, Andy Sundberg's wife has a Zoom license. Uh, that what we could do is you post your you post your oh. and you sign in with a code and a password, um, is, as opposed to having a link from the town site. I want to make sure that we can do that. I'll, I'll contact Solicitor Marcello about that. And maybe I'll send him an email tonight, depending on what time we finish up. Um, about you, that, you still have to coordinate it with the Tivit and videos and, and Andy and stuff, though, and and it has to be. You know, we only have one YouTube channel, probably. So, mm -hmm. well, I, I don't know. I, I'll ask. I'll ask. I'll ask Attorney Marcello. You, hey, Bill. This is Jason Claremont. Quick question. You, you mentioned workshops. Um, is that a different category or type of meeting that it, you know, with some different rules as far as you know, public, um, you know, participation and whatnot? I. I. I I know the, the agenda has to be made the same. Uh, you have to okay. stick with the agenda. The time frame still the same as to whether you need to open it up to the public. That may be, you know, in, in, in the course of your agenda and how you draft your agenda. Okay. Um, I, I was just concerned of you guys cross scheduling with other committees that may be going on at the time. Okay, okay, sure, thanks. So would we be required to be live on YouTube video when we hold our meeting because that would be something that we really that we probably couldn't arrange i don't know yeah. if we are or not i think it's uh, I, I, that's why I'll, I'll ask the solicitor that question okay I, I know exactly how i want it you know how it has to be phrased and whatnot so um excellent so now going on to the new business crmc rulemaking um on the cable corridors uh, that you know big piece of printout that they got is kind of interesting. They, the only corridor they talk about is over in the West Bay. They do a rather extensive, uh, you know, step-by-step -step up over to Quonset, um, which is interesting, but uh, not as interesting as coming up the Sakonet River. Um, did anyone have any co comments? I know I'll say right out now versus having people wonder what I was thinking. Um, finding somewhere in here the requirement that any cable entity share its its data with surrounding communities so so it's available like we've just may, managed to solicit uh, uh, through the entities that were going up and down the uh, and that Andy's been trying to translate for us um, I, I think that should be in one of their rules I don't think it's a big big ask um, of them. Does anyone else have any question about that? How broad a definition of I think that's a fair. of data does that does does that engender? Um, well, why don't you tell me, Andy? Because I don't know, I don't speak that stuff. Yeah, well, I'm wondering whether there's, I mean, there's financial data. There's, you know, it's not clear to me what um, at what point companies would think that we were. Uh, getting involved in proprietary uh, or business or business private issues. I'm not the least bit interested in how they tick, what money they're making, or anything else. I want to know the bottom data that they have to uh, have developed. So it's really physical data, right? Mm -hmm. What about um, biological? Because they'll when they lay a cable, you, they have to sample the bottom. Um, usually, the Bureau of Ocean. Energy management mandates a you know a pretty prescribed set of data that they collect. So they do all the, the geophysical stuff like Andy's been looking at, um, but they also take some biological data um, that are buried in the sediment and things like that. That might be good to get at as well. Mm -hmm. I don't know if any, anyone's looked at. I mean, you know, one of the questions is about the the um, impact of the, the electromagnetic field associated with the um, of the cable and the, and the electricity passing through it. 
Does anybody even know how to how to figure that out? Yeah, they're doing some work on URI, I believe, on that. Um, basically, doing some control studies um, with lobsters and skates. I think it was um, the most recent stuff, to, just to see if there is a, you know, they'll they'll lay a, a a cable and then a dummy cable and then see if there's an impact. Um, so. They they are doing work on it. I mean, it's definitely in some circles kind of controversial, you know, whether it will impact things. And um, lobsters actually seem to be attracted to it, oddly, oddly enough. But do we so know whether this is going to be direct current or alternating current? Off the top of my head, I do not know. Yeah, we would have the magnetic field changing if it were alternating. Otherwise, it'll be a constant field. Yeah, you would think so. The fluctuation in voltage as it, or power as it goes over time. Okay, so G1, applicants shall provide the CRMC background EMF measurements along the area. The intended cable routes within state water as part of the installation range, submerged removal cable. Both alternating current and direct current EMF measurements shall be conducted. Okay. I guess the answer is that. It's like the hard part skewed through the harbor. Mm. The edges. Yeah, that data on the on the on the at the right at the stone bridge uh, could prove very interesting. Yeah, and a little further up too, near the old trellis in that region We've got a couple of rises in there too mm -hmm. it's funny i said to these um these geology guys the survey guys something about running the cable on land and they said it is just so much harder to run cable on land and there are a million reasons why and they just said it, it, it wouldn't even be a viable project if the cable had to be run on land hmm. i have to go through the harbor yeah. Okay. Well, we have some time limitations on this supposedly, but uh, where is it? Bruce, do you know if um, if yeah. the developers or whoever's whoever else is collecting the data is required to give that data to the state? on any level um and then perhaps the state could disseminate um you know some some form of that data to the to the towns to the affected towns now i, I went through this and i didn't see something like that so i was sort of like okay if it's i don't know if that's part of their report or not hmm. it's a good suggestion i don't know i mean you know we got a hold of of some of that data so i i don't think there's I can't see envision a, a reason that would need to be proprietary. Mm. Um, I mean, I, I know some of these projects definitely are, but once they're in the works and you can see the boats out there and they're done collecting data and they're going to lay cable, um, I can't imagine why that data would need to be proprietary. Yeah, once they have the green light from the state, that data should be available. Right. It should be open. I think, I think it's a good suggestion. All right. So I uh, shall send a little love letter off to them saying on that. Um, next item. Yeah, it seemed like in December we had this item uh, recommendation regarding the reappointment of the Harbor Master on our agenda. And Tyler, if you want to take it into executive session, I didn't put it on as an executive session item. But now the council, uh, rather than going, oops, we forgot, is going, hey, we can get this from them again. So um Anyone have any comments regarding recommending the Harbor Master again? Shall Tyler keep his job? I yes. Think. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I vote yes. <laughs> All right. Um, roll call vote. I had a, a Charles Lawrence and Dave Stewart first and second. So Dave Stewart, roll call vote. Yes. Aye. Uh, Greg Banner. Yes. Uh, Andy Sundberg. Sure. Charles Lawrence. Aye. Jason Clemmert. Aye. Excuse me. Bruce Cox. Aye. And so it's 
You still got your job, Tyler. Thank you. Congratulations, I think, Tyler. I don't think we're done beating him up yet. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so the Stonebridge docks budget item is supposedly on deck. So, uh, so we should be able to, you know, we got to ride herd on this thing and, um, you know, get them in there. Um, Did you end up going to the budget committee, Bruce? Yeah, I never got noticed that you went, what, Tyler, anytime you get a notice from the town about the Harbor Commission and yourself, you'd give me a, a jingle. I'd really appreciate it because Bill Vieira is the one that actually sent me an email saying, hey, you may want to. And I was like, what are you talking about? I haven't been told a damn thing. Excuse yeah, me. no, I, I, I just assumed you were sent it too. I, yeah. I didn't know you weren't. I, mean, I was surprised when I got there and you weren't. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess you did a good job because uh, you got your budget approved and whatnot. Um, Don has got something for us. Pardon me? Don has got something for us. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see Don. Go ahead. No. Um, I, I just wanted to say that the um, as far as the, um, the dock and the uh, trailer, they were bought with the um, carryover money in municipal uh, capital account, which had uh, $518,000 in it. So... Um, we asked uh, the different departments what was the most important thing for them, try to whittle it down and spend $400,000. We went a little bit over that, um, but pretty much no matter what happens, those things are going to be bought. That's not, uh, that's already taxed money. It's uh, carryover money from the budget. So, um, yeah, and there wasn't any problem with Tyler's budget, so cool. So it's pretty good. Yeah. Excellent. And on to the harbor master. Uh Tyler, um either A, they haven't gone out, or B, you don't love me anymore. Uh morning renewal status. Have you sent those out? Uh not yet. So the computer crashed, the system crashed. I got that back up. And I'm waiting on my missing desk to come back, which should be back this week. I don't have an office right now. Ah, oh, God. I went there a few weeks ago, and I didn't have a desk. Everything was piled up in the corner, and I guess my desk is getting exchanged for a different one, and it's supposed to be there either today or tomorrow. It wasn't there today, so I'll give them a call tomorrow. But they, they'll be going out this week. Okay, well, if you don't, if you need a new desk, give me a call and give me a measurement because I'm thinking about <laughs> something different in my office. I may have a desk that I have to either get rid of or donate someplace. It's a big surface area, but I want to rearrange my office. Um, all right, yeah, because you know the the town's going to be looking for that money, <laughs> and uh, I guess we can't have late late fines anymore, at least not this year. And the boat's all any 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 projects going on in the boat at this point, Tyler? Um, yeah, everything's getting serviced on it. <clears throat> um the decals are worn off the side, so those are getting replaced. Um the spotlight wasn't working last year, so that's getting replaced right now. Um what else? There's a few other little things in the cabin that are getting cleaned up and fixed. Um, pretty much just general maintenance and making sure everything's turnkey ready to go. No, no, no big projects this year. Great. You're negotiating a price on a nice, nice trailer to be able to move it around with. Yeah. So they gave me that price last year and I just checked to make sure the price is still good and hasn't gone up or anything. And that price is still good. So if everything does get approved and I get the okay, I'll order it. Well, I think you can order it now. If I understand from Donna correctly, that's money that's in the uh, council's uh, a capital budget that money they have right now to be able to spend. Am I correct, Donna? Um, yeah, yes. that's what I was told. It's it's that's not even going to be it, it, those items are off the budget because people you can just buy it. So um, I oh, think the person, yeah, the person to talk to would be um, I would I would call Chris and and double check on that. But that that money's available. All right, I'll uh, I'll send Chris an email tomorrow. I just I don't want to order and see the money's not available till July or something, and yeah. tie the company up. 
Yeah, because we already told um, the department heads to that the, the money's available and they could, you know, put out to bid like the DPW what they needed. Um, I think the uh, the police. Uh, so yeah, check with Chris. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Excellent. Okay. Dr. Lawrence, your favorite motion, unless anyone has something else to say for the good of the order. How's Jason, doing? Doing? How's Jason doing? Yeah, how are you doing, Jason? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm getting along. You know, it's a, it's a pretty slow, painful process. So take care of your shoulders. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Do your PT. It's a lot of fun. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, been, it's been good. Hey, I just have one thing to bring up real quick before we close. We don't, I don't need to be belabor this because I think it's already sort of come to pass, but the, um, I'd sent around a little bit of information about the, um, the new wetland buffer rules um, from the DEM. It didn't make it on the agenda, but... Um, I'm I sorry, I didn't see that, Jason. I apologize if I'd realized... That's okay. Um, it, I think it's just good for us to be aware that there's a new... Um, a new set of um, rules that came down from DEM that takes the jurisdiction for establishing buffers around wetlands um, and other um, other water features, I guess you could say. Uh, it takes that jurisdiction out of the town's hands and um, it, it basically sets a statewide standard <laughs> for those. Um, it, it seems in most cases, and I'm not really familiar with what Tiverton zoning laws are and, um, around um, riparian features and, and ponds, lakes, and wetlands. Um, it, it seems like in, in a lot of cases, um, it will extend the, the buffer zone in some towns, but where towns have more, um, you know, larger buffer areas, it's actually going to shrink them. Um, so it's just something to be aware of. We might want to, if, if we have a chance, you know, I'll, I'll take a look and see if we can dig out what what Tiverton actually has on the books um, as far as their zoning laws but as 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 we are the harbor and, and you know coastal waters commission it's probably good for us to just be aware of that change that's coming down so is um, that a DEM wetlands issue it, it is yeah and it, it seems like um, the the rule already went out for public comment and closed on January um, end of January so I don't know what stage it's at um, it's still being called the proposed rule. I don't know if it was adopted formally or not. Um, but basically all, all property, I think um, most cases, the zones are extended to 200 feet from the edge of a river, floodplain or mm -hmm. reservoir, and then 100 feet from most other wetlands. Right. Um, and so I don't know. Again, I'm not really familiar with the zoning laws in Tiverton now, but um, right. something to keep an eye on. Yeah, and in contrast, um, CRMC, jurisdiction over freshwater wetlands um, as contrasted with DEMs was established by a, um, uh, an agreement that the two entities reached uh, several years back so that they literally drew lines around the state where they had coastal featured wetlands and then freshwater wetlands in general proximity to one another. And if you're on one side of the line you're in coastal jurisdiction for the, even the freshwater elements of it. And on the other side, you're in DEM jurisdiction. Um, oddly enough, uh, you know, this route one is one of the lines. Uh, I don't know where the line is in Tiverton, but like in Barrington and Warren, where I've done a lot of work in Barrington, um, the whole area of Narragansett Bay, the freshwater wetlands that are on the, on the bay side of Nayat Road, which is quite a distance from uh, the Narragansett Bay is the boundary line. Uh, so it is, it, that's that's jurisdictional issue is set there, but it, curious about the rules. I mean, I know Barrington has a more aggressive rule relative to setbacks than um, the, D, the state sites. Uh, so you routinely have to go before, I'm, that's what I'm, I'm doing next week uh, before a, a conservation commission uh, to say, hey, the boundary shift down this little part of this woman's lot by 10 feet. So now she has to get a blessing again. Um, you know, it's, um, it's interesting. It's, it's the, it's why you have rules and the rulemaking process in place. Sure. And this, this really kind of ties in. It's a nice nexus with, you know, what Chip's been working on with sea level rise. I mean, if you're, 
you're reducing those buffers in, in some areas and then, you know, couple that with sea level rise and, you know, it could create some issues. So, yeah, I just wanted to raise it just so we're aware of, of those sort of happenings at the state level that could trickle down. Um, Thank you very much. Trickle down here, so. Any other comments? The good of the order. Yeah, Bruce. Um, oh, come on. So if the capital budget's approved for that dock, um, you might want to check on that to get that started. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's 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 what I, I was thrilled about. Yes, but um, to re to release that money, I guess you'd have to call Chris. Right. We had to say here so. the we want to make now. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, because if you could get a head start on it, I mean, it could even be used this summer. Absolutely. Absolutely. We we have to make it used this summer. Let's just, you know, we have to make it done. Yep. All righty. Anyone else? Once again. Well, <laughs> great. I'll make my favorite motion. Come on, Chair. And Dave Stewart, was that a second I heard? All right, then roll call vote, Dave Stewart. Second. Good night. I second. Uh, Andrew Sundberg. All in favor. And good night, Jason. Aye. And Charles. Aye. Greg. Yes. Good meeting. Okay.